What is up guys? Welcome back to Wrench Avengers. Today we're going knuckle deep into Peter, my 86 Chevy C10. So we're pretty much done with all of the paint on the truck. Uh, got a few more things here to finish up, uh, but for now I want to get started on the suspension. So today we're going to be working on the front suspension. Uh, we're going to be replacing the bushings and the upper and lower control arms. Uh, I've got a pretty easy way to do that, so I'll show you guys later, as well as the ball joints. And we'll also be lowering the front of the truck as well with spindles and cutting springs. Right now the truck's got a wheel gap about the size of your mom's vag. I'd like to reduce that down to about the size of my dick. I mean, your dick. Ha! <laughs> got <he! laughs> So with that out of the way, let's get to work. So I suppose what I'm doing here might need a little bit of explanation. During all this I'm replacing the ball joints as well as the bushings and everything. Uh, and the upper ball joint is actually riveted to the upper control arm. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting off the rivets with the air chisel. Uh, figured it would be easier to do it while the uh, upper control arm is still attached to the truck. Again, new ball joints. I've got new ball joints. 
point, so if we have to uh, use the pickle fork to separate this, we can. What about air hammer here, Maz? Yeah. Uh, could you give me the flat? Hand? Okay, well, I was wondering what you had. Yeah, I've got the chisel right now. And I'll do it if you want me to. Fuck at my age, it don't matter if I die. <laughs> Just try not to fuck anything up, that's all. Yeah. There she goes. Alright, did it hit the jack? Yep. Uh, could you put some pressure on the jack and lift it up a little bit? Okay. Well, it dropped. It must have just it stopped it. Stopped it. Oh. Well, what is it turning? Yeah. Oh, now that's fine. Alright, put more pressure on the jack. Exercise some caution when uh, removing the spring. It's actually still got some energy stored in it, and if you're not careful, you could get seriously hurt. Or, you know, do what you want. I'm not your mom. Plus, I hear the ladies like the uh, pirate look. You know, eye patch wearing, peg leg having, poop deck swabbing, Johnny Depp beads in the beard type of guy. We're good. <laughs> All right. Just think about that. <laughs> you want a bigger hammer? I'll just try to hammer. hammer. Do you want me to hold that? Well, I don't know yet. So it don't drop all the way. Oh, if it falls down, it doesn't matter. We're not using it. Ah, okay. I'm just yeah. What you think? Yeah. <laughs>
So now that everything is pulled off that's gonna be pulled off of the driver's side, except for the outer tie rods, we'll go ahead and do the same to the passenger side, though I'm not gonna show all that. I am gonna be painting up all the parts just to clean them up a little bit, uh, but first I'm gonna replace the bushings, starting with the upper control arms. So you see many people either drill out the bushings, or in the past I've burned them out completely. Uh, I found that this is a little bit better way with this type of bushing uh, that has the metal sleeve on it. Just heat the outside of the metal sleeve until the rubber starts to bubble out of the outsides of the sleeve. Uh, you'll likely want to heat up the center shaft as well. Uh, you may catch the bushing on fire and that's fine, but just try to blow it out as best you can uh, so you don't dry out the bushing too much. And then try to push the bushing out with a screwdriver. This one didn't come out super easy as it was the first one we did, but as you can see we started to work the shaft until the bushing came out of the sleeve, uh, leaving the other side in place. We just heated it up on the outside like we did before and pushed the bushing on out. This method takes a little bit of time, but not a whole lot of effort either. Uh, by the time we got to the last control arm we had it done in about 10 minutes or so. So at this point you'll be left with the decision, do you replace the metal sleeve or just reuse it? Um, my kit that I had, uh, which came from Summit Racing, had uh, new sleeves in it, but I decided to just reuse the old ones, just cleaned out all the gunk with some lacquer thinner and cleaned it up real good, and then slapped the new polyurethane bushings in, and that's the way I did it. Then I just repeated this process on the rest of the control arms, and that was pretty much it. Next up is the ball joints. Uh, the upper ball joints, no problem. Basically, once you pop all those rivets out and pull the ball joint out itself, the new one just bolts in, uh, so that's no problem at all. Uh, the lower one actually needs to be pressed out and then pressed back in. Alright, with the ball joints in, uh, we shifted our focus over to the springs. I purchased brand new Moog 6454 springs. They're for three quarter ton heavy duty springs, I guess. Um, whereas my truck's actually not a three quarter ton, but it does have a 454 in it. So I'm hoping by grabbing these springs, cutting them down, that'll help with the ride quality a little bit. The plan is to start by cutting off half of the rung, uh, knowing I'm probably going to have to cut more off, maybe even the whole other half, um, but I don't want to cut it too low right now so I can work my way up to the height that I want. So knowing that brand new spring, after cutting it, it's going to settle a little bit, I want to give it time to settle and make sure that we cut the right amount off. So we'll start by cutting off that half a rung. It's 
shouldn't be moving much. So, alright, cut off wheel it is. Be sure not to use a torch to cut your springs. Uh, the heat can actually mess with the spring because they're proper temper. If you heat them, then the temper goes away and it can cause your spring to go limp like your dick. Uh, so be sure to use an abrasive or a bandsaw or something. If you use an abrasive like I did, uh, you're going to want to make sure to stop every once in a while, spray down the, the spring, don't let it get too hot. Uh, some people actually submerge the whole spring into a bucket of water up to the point that they're cutting and they'll use their cutoff wheel on top of that uh, just to cut down, uh, keep the rest of the spring from getting too hot. No, boy, I like. So, since this video is getting quite long, I'm gonna skip putting everything back together. Uh, it's basically just opposite of taking it apart. Uh, I did actually repack the outer wheel bearing because it was easy to get to and couldn't hurt to do to repack it. Uh, as well as something I didn't show a lot of was the two and a half inch drop spindle. It's made by McGuffies or McGoys or McGuys, however the hell you pronounce their name. So between the two and a half inch drop spindles and the cut springs, I'm looking for about a four inch drop. Uh, I know with what I cut off the spring, it's not going to be enough. Uh, so I'm probably going to end up having to cut it again or let the spring settle and maybe it'll settle down to that four inch roughly drop. Mostly just trying to get rid of as much of the wheel gap as I can, try to set that fender right above the tire. So here's a breakdown of pretty much everything we did on the truck. Pulled all the suspension out, um, replaced the upper and lower control arm uh, bushings and ball joints, though on the passenger side we actually didn't replace the bushings on the lower control arm because it was bent up and I wasn't able to. I'm looking for a replacement now and we'll deal with that later. Along with those ball joints that we replaced, we replaced the ball joint on the outer tie rod. Uh, the inner tie rod still seemed to be in good shape so I didn't mess with those at all. Got the new springs with half a rung cut out. Replace the shocks with some Beltex that are made for, you know, like a two and a half to four inch drop, something like that. Installed the two and a half inch drop spindles. And that's pretty much everything we did to it on the front. Uh, let's go ahead and get that set on the ground. Go ahead. It is lower. See how much lower though? Not a whole hell of a lot actually. Actually, you know what? <laughs> I'm not confident it's all that much lower right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm a little on the disappointed side for you. Well, <clears throat> but it's I pretty obvious that there is rake on it. So it did drop it. Well, we know for a fact it probably dropped at two and a half inches yeah. at least. Because that's what the spindles are. And that's disappointing. But not really. I actually kind of expected it to be sitting up a little bit higher. It's a stronger spring and, uh, you know, I didn't cut near as much off the spring as I thought I was going to have to anyway. So I, I kind of anticipated this. Uh, what I did do is I took the truck out for a quick ride to see if uh, the spring would settle at all. Um, and the spring actually settled a quarter inch just from that ride. Uh, as well as over the weeks or so uh, since we did this, did the swap, uh, the spring has actually settled another quarter inch, so it's actually settled down a full half inch. And with that information, I can help better determine how much more of that spring I need to cut to get to my desired ride height, though I'm thinking it's probably going to be the whole other half of that rung. Though before cutting any more off that spring, uh, I want to drop the back to try to make sure we can set it down level. 
Um, so drop in the back is for next week. Please let me know what you guys think of the video. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have any questions or uh, concerns or uh, anything. I've got a buttload more footage over this uh, project. Uh, I just didn't want to show it all for time reasons. Uh, so if you have any questions, I might have footage and I may be able to answer anything if you're running into similar problems or anything like that. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. Uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. You can check out my Instagram. Uh, and I think that's pretty much it. So we'll catch you next week whenever we're dropping the ass end.